It stinks. There's nothing virtual about it. The bad smell in the air is very real. But this farmer doesn't mind. Nova Duca's biological gas plant is bubbling along nicely today, with organic materials rotting and fermenting and stinking. It means that there's a good amount of gas going into the generators, which then produces electricity. Electricity from biogas is the most expensive of the renewable energies. So you really have to get the most out of it. Its main advantage is the controllability of this form of power production, because you can store the gas in the gas membranes. I have a personal and idealistic reason for helping to establish network stability in order to take advantage of the edge that the biogas sector has. So biogas provides predictable electricity, unlike wind turbines. There are several of those around Duca's farm. Today they're spinning, but yesterday they stood still. That's why Duca's rotting manure makes up an important building block in a much larger complex. Together, more than 1,000 small facilities form one large power plant. They're owned by farmers like Duca's, with solar roofs, wind turbines, biogas generators. Together, they're as powerful as a nuclear plant. How does that work? The secret is in these two floors at an old factory building in Cologne. There's no generator, no turbines, just computers that make up a virtual power plant. It's a data processing center, only it's calculating electricity output. The only physical thing is this box. It connects all the facilities outside to the main frame and adds up the energy that's fed into it. The engineer has a lot to do right now, because more people want to get involved. The box communicates through this modem and sends the data to the guidance system, or the guidance system can transmit signals to that box. Communicating small power plants, each one individually controllable. Two young economists came up with the idea five years ago. They had the old coal-fired plants in their sites. Today they trade some 100 million euros worth of electricity and are making a profit. We want renewable energies to take over system responsibility. The appropriate system has to be created for that so that the renewables can do what they do best, which is make up for temporary fluctuations in the power grid. That was our jumping off point, where we said we could network a lot of renewable energy plants, which can even out fluctuations. And they can take over the same network output that conventional plants used to provide, and it works. Here, a new biogas facility is still just a pin on a map because it has to be tested. Can it be easily remote controlled? The farmers let their small facilities be adjusted from outside. That makes their electricity marketable, so it's worth it. Back with Farmer Dukas. As a provider of green energy, he also drives an electric car, powered by his own electricity. He thinks the network solution is brilliant. Today, with so much wind and sun, his gas isn't in such demand. Back in Cologne, his output is reduced and he's given financial compensation. This down regulation can vary a lot. Sometimes there isn't one for two weeks, then it happens ten times a day. It depends on network demand. With this farmer, the usually silent electricity also gets its own sound in the form of a bug zapper in the pigsty. The ideal ecological cycle is shown here. The liquid manure goes into the biogas facility and produces electricity. Corn is added and the fermentation substrate is sprayed on the fields as fertilizer. This closed loop system, which has been used since the Middle Ages, gives my business a great deal of stability and is ecologically valuable. The weather forecast for the next few days is for rain and very little wind. That means Duca's smelly electricity will be in demand again.